Okay, in this video we want to look at the center of a group. So let's look at the definition. So given a group G, the center of G is defined as follows. So we use this notation Z of G, and that's going to be all elements of G where GX equals XG for all X and G. In other words, it's all elements of G that commute with all other elements of G. So uh, notice that means that little g is in z of g if and only if gx equals xg for all x in g. But you know, that's the same thing as if and only if um, g x, g, x, x inverse equals g again for all x in g. Great, and sometimes this is a useful way to look at it. Okay, so now uh, we want to prove the following proposition first before we do an example, and that proposition is that the center of G is in fact a subgroup of G, and so we're going to use the subgroup test. And so let's recall what that is. That says that H is a subgroup of G if and only if for all X and Y in H, X, Y inverse is also in H. And so that means you only have to check one thing to show something's a subgroup instead of three things by the definition of the subgroup. So let's suppose that um, X and Y are in the center of G. Okay, so let's notice what that tells us. That tells us that uh, G, X, G inverse equals X for all G in G, and also uh, G, Y, G inverse equals Y, again, for all G in G. So that's our entry fee into the center given by this definition over here. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is consider um, X, Y inverse. But now, notice that we can write X using this expression. And so we can write this is G, X, G inverse. So that's the same thing as X. And then we can write Y as G, uh, Y, G inverse. And then we're taking the inverse of that. So notice we've just replaced X with this, and we've just replaced Y with this. And G is an arbitrary element of the group. But now notice we can uh, get rid of our parentheses because a group operation is associative. So we have GX, G inverse here. Then we can use the shoes and socks theorem to take the inverse of this product by reversing the order and then taking the individual inverses. So the inverse of G inverse is G, and then we have Y inverse, and then finally we have G inverse. So here we reverse the order here and we took the inverse of everything. Now the next thing that we can notice, if we've got a G inverse next to a G, that's going to give us the identity. So these are going to cancel, and that's going to give us G times XY inverse times G inverse. So let's see what we have here. We have XY inverse equals G times XY inverse times G inverse. But now we can uh, multiply both sides on the right by G. And notice that's going to give us XY inverse times G equals G times XY inverse. But that's exactly what it takes to be in the center. In other words, X, uh, Y inverse is in the center of G, which tells us that the center of G is indeed a subgroup of G. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board and then we're going to look at an example of this. Okay, so for our example, we're going to find the center of the group of symmetries of the square. In other words, the dihedral group D4, which is a group of order 8. So, notice that D4 is equal to the group generated by R and S. And we have R to the fourth is S squared is the identity. And then we have RS equals SR cubed. So those are our defining relations for D4. And so, now maybe let's make the following observation is that if X is in um, the center 
of d4. That means it commutes with every element from d4, but it's enough to show that it commutes with just the generators of d4. So in other words, rx has to equal xr and sx has to equal xs. Okay, great. So we're going to look at two cases here, and the first case will be x equals a rotation, and then the second case will be x equals some sort of reflection. Great. But then I'm not exactly going to use these formulas right here. I'm going to use uh, maybe a simpler version of them, which will be something like this. I'm going to left multiply by R inverse, and this is equivalent to um, R inverse times X times R, but that's the same thing as R cubed times X times R. Great, and I'll do the same thing here. I'll left multiply by S inverse, but S inverse is just S because S squared is the identity, so that means X equals S X S. Great. Great, so now if we know that X is a rotation, what that tells us is that X equals R to the K, and we know K is between zero and three. We don't need four because R to the four is the same thing as the identity, which is R to the zero. Great, and now the next thing that we wanna show and so the next thing we want to look at is this thing, r cubed xr. So we have r cubed x, which is r to the k, and then r. So notice that this is r to the k plus 4, just by exponent rules. But that's r to the k uh, times r to the 4, but r to the 4 is the identity. So that gives us r to the k, which is just x. And then recall over here, we had r cubed xr, and so we have r cubed xr equals x. So in other words, this rotation commutes with all of the other rotations. Okay, so in other words, our arbitrary rotation commutes with the generator R, which is a rotation generator, so that kind of makes sense. Okay, so the ne next thing that we want to look at is what does it look like when X is commuted by S? So in other words, we want to calculate S, X, S, just as we described over here. But notice, since R was this, sorry, since X was this rotation, that's going to be the same thing as S, R to the K, S. Great. But then by a uh, claim that we made in a previous video, we can move this S through R by replacing it with, uh, by replacing K with 4 minus K. So this is going to give us S times S times R to the 4 minus K. Okay, good. But now notice, S times S is the identity, so this is going to be R to the 4 minus K. Okay, great. But now remember, our goal is for this to be equal to X itself, which is R to the K. So what that gives us is this equation, R to the 4 minus K equals R to the K. Okay, good. But now, notice we can maybe multiply both sides by the inverse of this, which is r to the k minus 4, and that's going to give us um, r to the 2k equals the identity. Okay, but notice that means that 2k has got to be a multiple of 4. In other words, 2k is congruent to 0 mod 4. In other words, k is even. Great, but now if K is even, then that means this rotation that we picked up right here is really equal to X equals R uh, to the zero power or R squared. In other words, X was just the identity or it was R squared. Okay, so let's see what we've shown so far. We've shown that if X is a rotation and it's in the center, then it has to be either no rotation at all, remember R to the zero is just the identity, or it has to be a half rotation around R squared. Okay, so now let's do the same thing for X is a reflection. So what that means is that we can write X equals S times r to the k, and again, k is between 0 and 3. 
and let's look what it would take for x to commute with our uh, generator r. In other words, we want to look at r cubed xr in this case. So we'll do r cubed xr. So that's going to be r cubed s um, r to the k r. Good. But now what we can do is commute this r cubed through, and that's going to give us s r cubed when commuted through just becomes r, and then we have r to the k, and then we have r. Okay, good. But now notice that's going to give us s and then r to the k plus 2. Okay, great. But now we, we want this to be equal to x itself, and x itself is equal to s r to the k. Great. Now we can cancel the s's from both sides, and that gives us r to the k plus 2 equals r to the k. Great. But now notice what that tells us is that r squared equals the identity just by multiplying both sides by the inverse of r to the k. But that's a huge problem because r squared is not the identity, so um, we get a contradiction. In other words, if x is a reflection, it cannot be in the center. So that means only rotations are in the center, and in fact, um, only these two rotations are in the center. So I'll clean up the word and then we'll do a summary. So let's look at the summary of this problem. So the only rotations in the center of D4 are E and R squared. So let's recall that when we assumed that we had a rotation in the center of D4, we saw that these were the only two that were possible. So in other words, R to the first and R cubed, that was not possible, possible to be in the center. And also we showed that there are no reflections in the center of D4. So we did that by arriving at a contradiction. And so what that tells us is that the center of D4 is precisely this subgroup with the identity and R squared. In other words, that's a rotation by 180 degrees. But that's exactly the cyclic subgroup generated by R squared. Okay, great. This is a good place to end this video.